In the name of the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Happy Easter 2021, everyone. It's great to see you, and it's great to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus from the dead and what that means for us as well and our life. Now, that brings me to a really interesting point. You've heard me say over and over again that one of the popular ideas in the culture is all these religious beliefs, you know, they're, they're just kind of guesswork. You can't really know. There's no way to verify this if any of these claims are true. And I've actually said to you before, I think that somewhere around 85, maybe even 90 percent of the claims that Christianity makes can be verified as being true. Admittedly, there's about 10 percent, but the vast majority of the things that we claim can be tested out in one's life to see if they're true, to see if they make sense, and then to see if they're worthy of your time and your energy and your life. Well, guess what? <laughs> Today is one of those days when we're in that 10%. There's nothing we can do in any of our lives to affirm that this really happened, that Jesus died and rose from the dead. It's part of that 10% that we act on faith. However, I want to suggest to you that there's still really good reason to believe this. Now, for some, the reason comes from the Bible itself, which is the original prophecies of God to our Jewish brothers and sisters, going all the way back from Abraham and then going through and culminating in the promise to David that an heir would come, and then the fulfillment of the prophecy and the, the life and all that we see in the New Testament. But for some skeptics, that's still not sufficient. You know, well, that's the Bible, and how do I know that's true and all of that? Despite the fact that the, the scriptures themselves, both uh, Hebrew scriptures, what we call the Old Testament, and the New Testament, have been some of the most thoroughly investigated uh, literature on all of the planet, and many of the claims verified, despite that some would be skeptics still. So the question becomes, is there nothing else then that can verify that we should trust this, that we should trust that this event happened? Is it nothing but pure faith? I will offer with you two things that strike me, or at least that are highly motivational for me to believe in this day and the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. And the first is because of the nature and the moral quality of who Jesus is. So I've shared with you before that I love nature, that nature is a, a, a really easy place for me to get a sense of God and, and just God's presence and God's power. Uh, I think I might have shared with you that at one point when I was in high school, I even thought about, should I go to University of Rhode Island, which had a great marine biology program and get a PhD in marine biology. I love science. I love science for me, enhances my ability to appreciate God and love God. When I look at this cosmos and I look at the incredible intelligence and power to create this out of nothing and then sequence it through evolution over billions of years to develop, I can't help but wonder where that God, that being that could do all of that to become human, what would that being look like? Would it be like what some have said and some have claimed, which is that that God would be a tribal God, that God would be jealous, that God would be jealous to protect God's uh, reputation and, and God's acknowledgement that it's God. And indeed, we have some of those references in the scripture uh, where there's that sense of God is a jealous God. We also have this sense of God. Would it be a God that's, that's perhaps wrathful and takes vengeance on others? And indeed, there are passages, especially in the Old Testament, that talk about the wrath of God. But what we also see in our faith, not just in the natural world, but even in our faith, is an evolution in the understanding of who God is and what God is like. And so St. Paul, you'll recall, famously said, when I was a child, I thought like a child. And when I became an adult, I, th I, be I, th I thought more like an adult. And that applies not just to individuals, but it applies to communities. And so for the Christian community, we see a profound development and a found profound revelation in who God is through Jesus of Nazareth. He is the image, as the, the book of Hebrews says. He is the image of the invisible God. To look at Jesus is to see the very nature of God. And what do we see? We see a being 
of incredible tenderness and mercy and kindness and patience and forgiveness and justice. We see a being who will stop at nothing and go to no ends, the good shepherd who will leave the 99 to find the one, the being that will say, you don't, you who are without sin, you cast the first stone at the woman caught in adultery. The being who says to him, the very foundation of his faith, the rock of his church, who would betray him three times. Peter, I forgive you and now feed my sheep. We see in Jesus this being of moral superiority and excellence. And when I reflect on what would that nature of that creator God be like, it must be like that. Because the very definition of God is God is the greatest beyond which nothing else can be conceived. And so the God is the greatest in all virtue. And for me as a Christian, I see that lived out and embodied in Jesus. And so I believe that God wouldn't let that end, God the Father, with the crucifixion of Jesus, who went to the cross to suffer for us, that our eyes may be open, that we may see that the path that he pleads to us to follow, the path of compassion and community and engagement and truth and justice-making, that path is the way. That path is the truth, and that path is the path to life and eternal life. And so when I reflect on Jesus, and I reflect on this day, I reflect that it makes sense to me and is consistent with the nature of God, that God would resurrect Jesus from the dead. But for me, there's arguably an even more powerful reason why I believe, and it's practical. It is that Christianity makes one of the craziest claims out there of all philosophies and all theologies, and you've heard me say this and preach on this, this has been a theme for me all Lent. Christianity is the wackadoo religion, unlike almost everybody else, that says God isn't just found in light and bright and happy and comfort. Thanks be to God we find God there. But God is also found in profound experiences of loss and trauma and suffering. And so we can test that out with our life. Is that true? Is that real? That God can bring new life, can be, bring resurrections out of losses and trauma and sufferings. And so I've been preaching over and over again in instances of my life biographically of how I've come and Lori and I have come out of Katrina and the turnaround that's happened there. I've, I've repeatedly talked in sermons about places where I see that new life breaking out all over Good Shepherd that would never have happened otherwise. Want one little quick proof? It's this. It's Zoom. Look at all the people on this view. Look at all the people joining us, not just from outside Good Shepherd, but outside the state who are now able to be a part of this. This new life would never have been part. There was no need for it to be a part. But the breaking open of COVID has allowed this to become part of our community. And that is a little taste, a little sacrament of what the Holy Spirit does, which is to take those horrible COVID moments and crosses that break us open and to let them be pathways where the little green shoots can shoot up between the pavement and bring new life and new hope. So I admit, this is part of the 10%. We can't prove that Jesus was raised from the dead, but I can prove this. I can prove if you believe it, it makes a huge difference in your life. It gives you the power to trust the other 90%. It gives you the energy and the faith to put it into practice because this is the seminal point. Christianity is not some abstract philosophy or theology. Christianity is a participatory sport. It's like swimming. 
you can sit in a classroom with chalkboards and look at the backstroke and the side stroke and all those different things. But if you never jump in the water, you'll never understand what it's about. We learn how to swim best by swimming. We become loving by loving. We become deeper Christians and the faith begins to make more sense when we follow Jesus and we do what he says and we stew that together and we support us together and we create a safe split space in our community where it's okay to try and fail. It's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to confess to one another. You know, I've made a mess or our brothers and sisters who are in 12 steps programs will say, my life has become unmanageable and I need help. That's what church should be. It's the safe space to be honest, to be real, and to repent, not in that nasty 19th century fundamentalist American sense of you're bad, you're a sinner, you're awful, but in the biblical sense of repentance, the Greek word metanoia, we change how we think. And so Easter this year, where we're still bearing a COVID cross, Easter challenges us to think differently, that God is with us and God is for us. And there is nothing that God won't do to heal us and redeem us and set us free so we can be the people that God created and designed and evolved us to be. Unique, unique people with gifts and talents, putting them in service and love and faithfulness and mistakenness and foolishness and all that it means to be human. But following this son, this Messiah, this Christ, through all the crosses, and we'll have more, it is the nature of human life, but following him on his way of love. So no matter what cross we bear, we see in him that this God loves us beyond our wildest dreams, and there is nothing God won't do. All manner of suffering and even death, even death on a cross for us. May that give us strength and hope and energy and faith to move through our life with greater and greater faith, hope, and especially love. Thanks, thanks be to God for Easter and the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.